Natalie Sidesurf here of Sidesurf Cake Studio, and I'm going to show you how I made a realistic pepper cake with some really simple techniques. I think that most people would prefer cake over a raw green pepper. Maybe not all, but most. So this is one of those cakes that you can make for your friends, and they'll be pleasantly surprised when they find out what it really is. So let's get started. Let's start this one off with some cake dough, which is just cake crumbs mixed with icing. It's the same stuff that cake balls are made of. With some nice clean hands, you wanna sculpt the basic shape of the pepper. This pepper has three main sections that I'm defining, and the best way to sculpt this shape is with your fingers. Once sculpted, you wanna pop it in the fridge and we're gonna color some modeling chocolate. Starting with one drop of gel food color that is green. We wanna match the lightest shade of green on the pepper. So now we're gonna add some yellow. I'm getting closer, but the color is still a little too bright. So to dull that green a little, I'm going to add a very, very small drop of red food color. So red and green are complementary colors, so that small drop of red is going to make the green less vibrant, which is perfect pepper green. Now roll out some modeling chocolate and you're gonna cover the chilled cake. Since we're using modeling chocolate, we can actually pick up the cake and kind of wrap the chocolate around it. Then you can pinch off the excess chocolate skirt and even cut it with scissors or a knife and then blend out those seams. This is why I love modeling chocolate. You can seriously just erase any of these little lines and make it look like it's one solid piece. Look at that, it's crazy. It's like an eraser. Now I'm gonna define the shape of the pepper a little more with the sculpting tools. And I'm really able to sculpt so much faster when I'm replicating a three-dimensional object that I actually have right in front of me. So rather than just using images, I really recommend purchasing a real pepper. That way you can just copy what you see and use it as a reference. Now it's time to sculpt the stem area. So first I wanna mark off the size that I wanna make the round area of the stem. I'm just using a tool to make a mark. And then I'm gonna use those marks as a guide when I'm sculpting. So to thin out the edges, I push down from the top with a ball tool while pressing up with a flat surface tool. I really felt like I was a dentist here. <laughs> but it definitely worked to create that flared, thin, tapered edge. Now to find small points around the edge. And you can see on the real pepper, it has these little pointed areas. And I'm just copying the real pepper. With a small ball tool, you can go in and add these little dimples that go around the edge as well. The real pepper had a larger bump than mine, so I added an extra piece of modeling chocolate and blended that right in. The stem of my pepper actually fell off, so I replicated the little nub instead, and uh, it's really just a circle inside of a larger circle. And I added a little bit of texture for fun. The other end of this pepper was pretty much already done when I covered the entire thing with chocolate, so I did go in and kind of define it a little more, but that was all it needed. And then I went in and added a few imperfections throughout the pepper. So there's little dimples and marks and lines, and you don't want it to feel like a pattern. You want it to be very, very random. To paint the pepper, I used green, yellow, and red gel food color, just like we did when we colored the modeling chocolate light green at the beginning. So the reason that we colored the chocolate light green is so that we can paint in the dark areas. It makes for a more realistic effect when you hand paint dark areas on a light color rather than painting in light areas on a dark color. Use a clear alcohol or an extract to dilute the food color and it's gonna kind of be like painting with watercolors. And what's great about that is it'll dry really quickly and then you can add another layer and another layer. You wanna let the color seep into the cracks and all the little dimples that you sculpted. 
I switch my brushes up a bit, so I'll add a dark area and then blend the color with a nice, clean, dry, soft brush. And I go back and forth. So I add color and then with a clean brush, wipe it and blend it. I painted the nub with a very light green gray color. And you can see, I'm just trying to replicate what I see in the real pepper. It's got some green in there, but it is pretty gray. Now that the stem is painted, I'm gonna go in and paint all the sides a more vibrant green to copy the real pepper. I added an imperfection across the top, like the real pepper had, and instead of painting it, I actually took a sculpting tool and carved away the line, which exposed that lighter green chocolate. I thought that I think that's like a really great way to add an imperfection in a more realistic way than if I was to paint it in. You can clean the food color off the cake board with a wet paintbrush and a paper towel. You just brush the food color out from under the edge of the cake and then wipe it away with a paper towel. And you can keep doing that until the water starts to run clear and that's how you know you got all that food color up. And there you have it, a pretty pepper cake.